Hey guys, my name is Danielle, and in this background tutorial, we will see how I created this 2D animation in Spine, which includes multiple animation in multiple directions with various skins. What I'm about to show you have saved me a lot of work and time when creating our game Nugget and Penny. It includes some tips that completely change the way I work and will save you tons of time. In this Spine file, we have three shark skins with some animation in three different directions, like idle, swim, eat, and die. This video will have three parts. This the file preparation, spine file preparation, and animating. Let's look at how we prepare the Photoshop file for this. We work with the Photoshop to Spine script. So we need to place all layers under folders and tag the folders to communicate our intentions for the script. Our three root folders are the skin folders. One folder for each type of shark. Those shark are designed to move in six directions, so we need to create all of their different directions. To save time, I deliberately made the shark symmetric, and by this, we only need to create three directions, southwest, west, and northwest. Later on, inside a game engine like Unity or Unreal, we can use a script to mirror the animation to achieve all of the six directions. We create three direction folders for each skin. We make sure to tag the direction folder with the folder tag, and name it only with the direction name without any addition. For example, we have folder and W. Under these folders, we place the slot folders. We should give each slot folder a descriptive name of a body part. Don't forget to prefix it with a slot tag. Under the slot folder, we can place a single layer with the art. Its name will contain the relevant direction and the name of the slot folder it placed under. If we need a multiple layers, we can create a wrapping folder for them prefixed by the merge tag. It will be merged into a single attachment after export. It can get a bit confusing when we organize the PSD file. But remember, under the skin folders, all folders and layers must have the same name. This is crucial to get the accurate spine file after exporting. For example, both skin folders of the Shark Hammer and Shark Speed has SW folder, which contains a slot folder named Tail, with an art layer called SW Tail. To recap, we have the root folder, which is the skin. Inside it, a folder of direction. Inside it, a slot folder of a body part. And underneath it all, an art layer or a merge folder with the naming scheme of direction and body part. One last thing before we export. To control the root pivot point of the character within the Photoshop file, we click on the ruler corner and while holding the mouse down, we drag the cursor to the position of your choice. If you can't see the rulers, Ctrl R in Windows or Command R in Mac will show and hide them. So now we can finally export the PSD file. The link for downloading the script is in the description. Once the script completes exporting, we can see its result under the folder where we save the PSD. Notice how we have now a JSON file and an image folder, filled with folders for each skin and folders for each direction. We import the JSON file by going to Spine, Import Data, and searching for the right folder. As you can see, we got a bit of a mess with the draw order. We only need to rearrange the drawing order and make sure we got it right with all the skins. Click the angle brackets to navigate between the different skins. Exporting the PSD file using the script will organize the file correctly and saves us a lot of work. For example, we have under the body slot the three skin placeholders we need for each direction. When we change the skin, we can see how the attachment changes accordingly. So let's start by placing the bones. In the setup mode, I choose to show the southwest direction, and we are going to place the bones based only on this direction while ignoring the other two. The tricky part of this character is the mouth. We can see how the mouse position changes for each skin. In this case, we can place the bones in an average position that will match all skins. It doesn't have to be precise. The more important thing is that it will be convenient for us the animators. We place two bones for the body, body down 
and body up. The bones of the dorsal fin, fin front, and fin back will set as the child of the body up bone. For the face, which is also a child of the body up bone, we place a bone named face control to control the eyes and the mouth parts. Underneath it, we have the mouth down and mouth up bones. Mouth down is the parent of mouth down teeth bone, and the mouth up is the parent of the eye back, eye front, and pupil control bones. To attach the bones to the relevant slots, we click on the attachments and press P. Then, we click on the bone we choose and set it as the parent. Now, let's focus on the other two directions. We select the skeleton in the tree and click on the duplicate button. We are going to reposition the west and northwest attachments, so we will later use the duplicate skeleton as a reference for the original positions. For now, let's hide the second skeleton. We take an attachment, in this case the west front eye attachment, and reposition it to pupil front bone. Be sure to do the same to all the other attachments, west and northwest, which needs adjustment to the bones we have placed. After we finish repositioning the attachments, we go to animate mode and create what I call direction bank. Now is the time to show the duplicate skeleton and change its loss alpha to make it transparent, so we can see what we are doing. We create a new animation and name it W. For a start, we active all the attachment with the W direction in their name. Be sure to have the auto key toggled on, so the keyframes will be saved in the animation. Using the duplicate skeleton as a reference, we reposition the bones to match the original position of the attachments. We also change the draw order as needed. We now have the west direction saved as the animation W. We do the same for northwest direction, and for good measure, we place those animations under a folder named directions. It is important to save those animations. Do not delete or override them by mistake. We need those keyframes as a base for different animation in those directions. Now we are ready to create the meshes which we need for the squishy body and fins. To save time while creating the meshes for all the 9 different body attachments, we can duplicate a mesh we already created and drag it to the skin placeholder of another skin. Don't forget to double click the attachment name and change it to the name of a relevant skin. Sometimes you will need to make a few adjustments, but it sure save me a lot of time and frustration and I'm sure it will save you time as well. To create the squishy smooth movement of the fins, we will create two identical bones. The first one, fin front, we will split into two. The second, the fin front split, we will split into six. Selecting the root bone and clicking on new path will create a path. We name it fin front path. We will then place two points of the path according to the fin front bones. Be sure to move the handles so the path will be a straight line. Next, we select all the six fin front split bones and go to New, Path Constraint. Name it and select the path we created. In the constraint we created, we change Tangent to Change Scale. At the Weights window, bind the path constraint to the two bones. Make sure the vertices weight can be controlled by the two bones. Our final step is to bind the mesh of the fin front to the six split bones. As you can see, the fin moves quite smoothly. Of course, the number of vertices of the mesh and the weights can affect the smoothness, so feel free to change those until you get a satisfying result. When we animate a character with different directions, I prefer to finish animating all the animation in one direction before moving to another. This way, I can be sure I will not need to change animation three different times if I need any changes. After animating all the southwest animations, I start animating the northwest direction. The most efficient way is to duplicate the NW animation from the direction bank we created. I copied the keyframes for a finish SW animation and placed it next to the NW keyframes. What's nice about copying SW animations to NW animations is that for most animations we only need to adjust the draw order. Copying southwest animations to the west animations requires more adjustment but nothing too complicated. Again, we duplicate the W animation from our bank and place the keyframes from the southwest animation next to it. 
copy-paste the W animation keyframes to the first and the last SW animation keyframes. Notice how the animation looks? Yeah, we will need to fix that. We find the keyframes in the middle which make the mess and fix them. So that's it. We now have a 2D shark animation with three different skins in three directions. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments which shark you like the most. For more game dev tutorials about Spine and Unity, be sure to like and subscribe. We also post our own games develop, where we show our different Spine animated characters and our game dev process. Until next time!